From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. Want to stop smoking? There's still plenty of time left in today's Great American Smoke Out. We'll tell you why students in our area are determined not to get started on the dangerous addiction just ahead on News 13. Good evening and thanks for joining us everyone. I'm Kristen Bozinski. Just say no. It's the Great American Smoke Out. Here in the Hazleton area, some students are taking a proactive step to help stop people from smoking. As Christina Papa tells us, sometimes seeing is believing. Oh, Goopy, tacky tar, and a black well. lung might make you think twice about smoking. After one year of smoking cigarettes, this is what your lungs look like. It's nasty. It's crazy. It's disgusting. That's exactly why Sorrento Gardens Drug and Alcohol Services of Hazleton decided to bring their booth full of goodies to the school today to spread awareness of the effects of smoking to the students in honor of the Great American Smoke Out. Today is a Great American Smoke Out Day and it's a national campaign across the whole United States and we're trying to get people to quit smoking who are smoking and trying to get people not to smoke who are maybe being peer pressured in school. Students got to take a look at the booth during their lunch period. Some students say they lost their appetite after seeing the effects of the smoke on this 20-year-old pair of lungs. Panzarella tells me that visuals like this black pig lung really helps the kids learn more about the dangerous uses of nicotine. Because we can't see people's lungs and we don't know how they're turning black and what's happening uh, with the tar that's getting past the filter. So the visual uh, displays are very convincing. Sorrento Garden says it tries to provide education and awareness on health issues like smoking to the new generation. So hopefully they'll think before they light up. Stay healthy. Smoking's bad for you. Stay healthy. Christina Papa, News 13, Hazleton. Thanks, Christina. Well, if you really need to stop smoking, the state of Pennsylvania is there for you with nicotine replacement therapy, and you can request it today. All you have to do is call the number on your screen, 1-800-QUIT-NOW. The state offers the nicotine therapy every year in conjunction with the Great American Smokeout. It's co-sponsored by the American Cancer Society, the hope being that if the therapy might help someone quit for 24 hours, they might decide to give up smoking for life. Smoking is the largest single cause of preventable disease and death in the United States. The Cancer Society says Despite that, 45 million Americans continue to smoke. Police thought they were dealing with a man threatening someone with a gun. In the end, they found a much different scenario. Officers surrounded an apartment building on North Pine Street. 911 reports were that three people were fighting there. Police never found the man who was said to be involved. They did find two women in the second floor apartment along with small children. Now the women told police there was never any weapon involved in the argument. The man apparently involved took off before police got there. Police did find a shotgun in the attic of the building. They confiscated it after no one could prove they owned it. As of right now, police have not charged anyone in this incident. State police say they've nabbed the robber of a Freeland pharmacy and that he faces charges in Ohio as well. Investigators say Angel Luis Molina Rivera was the robber who held up the CVS pharmacy on Center Street in Freeland back in October. Police say Molina Rivera walked into the drugstore just as it was opening and handed a supervisor a note saying, this is the robbery, just give me the money in the register. The worker did just that and he walked out of the store. State police and investigators from Freeland and Weatherly eventually tracked Molina Rivera down at his home just two blocks down from the street from the CVS. Turns out he's also wanted on drug charges in Ohio. He's in the Luzerne County Prison. Higher volume in and out of the Candu Corporate Center will mean better traffic safety at the entrance. A new traffic light will be installed at the entrance on Route 309. Much of the increased traffic has occurred because the Hazleton Area School District's Magnet School is located in the park. The Hazleton Area Academy of Science, which emphasizes math and the sciences, is currently housed 
in the high school. Next year, it will move to a location in the corporate center. 500 students and teachers will attend the academy when classes are in session and it was sold to the district earlier this year. Candu says while a traffic study indicated the light isn't actually required at the entrance, it plans to install one anyway and err on the side of safety. It was a long, tedious hearing, but it puts Luzerne County one step closer to a new budget for 2013. As the public watched and Luzerne County Council listened, department heads from across the county presented their individual pieces of the county budget pie. Most found ways to cut within the budget. On the other hand, Luzerne County District Attorney Stephanie Salavantis requested an additional half million dollars be added on top of her five million dollar budget for next year. She says with escalating crime in the county, her department needs it. Luzerne County Manager Robert Lawton has proposed a $274 million budget, which would, wouldn't raise taxes for property owners. County Council is set to approve the budget on December 11th. Taxpayers in the city of Hazleton could be faced with a large tax increase. It's part of the mayor's proposed budget, and it includes more police officers on the streets. The mayor and police chief Frank DeAndrea say the city is in a financial crisis. They talk about the money woes on tonight's Sam LaSant show premiering at 8 o'clock. Here's a preview. Thank you very much. Well, folks, is the city of Hazleton going bankrupt? And the police department, as the chief said, is, is this on a sinking ship. Uh, folks are going to be learning tonight on the Sam LaSan Show, uh, as well as you can read about it tomorrow uh, in the Standard Speaker. Uh, you know that 60% tax increase? Be surprised. Guess what's going to happen to it? It's on a Sam LaSan Show tonight. And also the chief explains in detail what he means when he's saying the police department's on a sinking ship. A lot of great information uh, on the shows tonight, 7 and 8 p.m., as well as, again, uh, tomorrow there'll be a, a full article about the show in the Standard Speaker. So uh, for additional times, you can check the Standard Speaker for our schedule, as well as SSPTV.com. Now back to you. And again, that show premieres at 7, and then you can see it again at 8. Well, baseball fans in Northeast Pennsylvania, get ready to ride the rail. A big announcement from the minor league ahead tonight. And coming up on News 13, in exactly one week, many will sit down with family and friends for a traditional Thanksgiving meal. We'll take you to an early feast where some seniors were spreading thanks. Some local seniors got a taste of Thanksgiving today at the Hazelton Area Senior Center. As our Jasmine Brooks tells us, this center isn't just about the scrumptious meals, it's about making friendships. For Shirley Singer, today is her Thanksgiving. Her parents have passed on and her son lives across the country. So the Senior Center is where Shirley is celebrating her holiday. So a lot of people don't have anybody around. Their husbands are gone, their wives are gone. And uh, I think it's great that they have something like this. And Shirley is not the only one taking advantage of the wonderful meal served today. Dozens of seniors came out to enjoy the feast and the company of others. Well, I think it's wonderful to get a chance to meet new meet people of all ages, seniors. We, we socialize a lot and we do rumbo, we, we talk, we have a good time. Oh yeah, a lot of different people that come in. Every week it's somebody different, you know, come in and try it. It, today is really crowded. Believe it or not, this Thanksgiving dinner right here at the Hazleton Senior Center has 69 guests, making it the largest crowd out of all the senior centers in Luzerne County. It makes me happy because then I know seniors from the community are partaking in the lunch program um, and they're obtaining at least one well-balanced, warm, healthy meal a day. But that's not all. These seniors are meeting new people, keeping active, and most importantly, staying happy. Reporting for News 13, Jasmine Brooks, Hazelton. And you can help spread warm Christmas tidings all around the world this holiday season by helping a group of young people from the Freeland area. They're making Operation Christmas Child work in our area. The group is working at St. Luke's Lutheran Church to assemble special Christmas show boxes that will be filled, Christmas shoe boxes that will be filled with toys and other gifts and distributed to suffering children around the world. This year, Operation Christmas Child, which was founded by the Billy Graham Crusade, will deliver a its 100 millionth gift box to a suffering child. But they go all over the world, and there's several countries that are called giving countries, um, Canada, United States, 
Australia, Great Britain, Spain, and France are giving countries, is what they're called. And there's countries just all over the world that'll receive them. Well, everybody likes getting presents. So why not give some presents to somebody who doesn't get them all the time? The group at St. Luke's in Freeland are looking for toy donations to help fill the boxes as well as volunteers to help pack them. The kids will be working on the boxes every evening through this Sunday. If you'd like information about donating or helping to pack the boxes, call St. Luke's Church at 636-1241 or 751-8549. On your screen right now, you're winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played, everyone. Your daily number, 532 your big four, three, three, five, zero, Quinto, two, eight, one, two, nine, and Treasure Hunt, two, five, eighteen, nineteen, twenty-two. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news. First tonight, happy fifth birthday to Landon Stone of Freeland. He's a student at Country Charms. This wish comes from your great-grandmother, Nanny Elsie. Tonight's Talk of the Town report. All current members of the Hazleton Art League are invited to participate in the members exhibit taking place in the gallery from December 1st through December 30th. An opening reception will be held Saturday, December 8th. For more information, please call the Art League 570-817-1075. And finally, the Emanuel Christian School's second annual fall auction will be held Saturday, November 17th at Carmen's Country Inn. The cost is just $15 per person and includes dinner. Viewing of items will be held at 4, dinner and program at 5, and auction at 6. For more information, please give the school a call, 459-1111. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Beatrice D. James of Levittown. Memorial will be held Saturday at 11 a.m. from the Philip J. Jeffries Funeral Home. Friends may call from 10 to 11 a.m. H. Ernie Bishop, formerly of Drums. Services are Saturday from the Conley Funeral Home in Elburn, Illinois. Lona Knappenberger, formerly of Whitehaven. Graveside services will be held Saturday at 11 a.m. in the Laurel Cemetery. Arrangements are by the Lehman Family Funeral Service. Daniel Joseph Cook of Rockledge. Mass is Saturday at noon in the St. Michael the Archangel Church. Friends may call at the church Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. The Donald J. Butler Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Ronald Aaron Labanoski of Zionsville. Services will be private from the Flanner and Buchanan Funeral Home. Nancy B. McLaughlin of Drums. Mass is Friday at 10 a.m. from the Good Shepherd Church. The Cropton Hughes Funeral Home assisted the family. And Thomas M. Starooch of Freeland. Funeral is Saturday at 9.30 a.m. from the McNulty Funeral Home. Friends make all Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop located on 15th Street in Hazleton. Free delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. All right, a big congratulations to fourth grade Holy Family Academy student Raymond Sabatini. This young man recently won third place in an essay contest that had entries from all across Luzerne County. Our Jasmine Brooks joins Raymond now for this week's Family Time. We're here at Holy Family Academy for this week's Family Time. Joining me now is fourth grade student Raymond Sabatini and his teacher, Miss Linda Pauline. He just won third place, which is awesome, in an essay contest around the entire county. So first, Miss um, Linda Pauline, can you please tell me a little bit about the assignment itself? Yes, uh, it was incorporated into the social studies in English class. And at that point, it was called honor and respect. And why would you honor and respect a family member that is a veteran? Uh, so Raymond chose his father, who is a veteran. We also incorpor incorporate into our theme of Holy Family Academy for Thanksgiving. And of course, we are very thankful for all of our veterans and all of those who are serving for us right now in our country. And it's incredible to imagine that one of your students won third place. It is phenomenal. And I am so proud of this wonderful young man. Okay. That means you're a good teacher. <laughs> no, no. Raymond, tell me a little bit about your father and why you chose to uh, write about him. Because my father is a good man and he served for our country and um, he cared that about our country and... Okay, can you read me a little bit of your essay? What, what I learned most from my dad who served in the United States Air Force is that honor and respect is earned through integrity. 
honesty, self-respect, and respect for others. Okay, and so do you think one day maybe you will join the service? Yes. And why is that? Because I want to help our country. So what does it feel to be recognized third place in Luzerne County? I feel good. You feel good. And so tell me a little bit about how you were recognized. Um, me and my dad worked on the essay and um, we went to this dinner and they told me that I was the third place winner. Mm -hmm. And what did your dad say? He was really proud of me. Mm -hmm. And it looks like your teacher is too. I am. I am so proud of him. I, when I received the information, I was ready to uh, jump out of my own skin. Okay. Well, thank you so much and great job and congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank For this you. week's Family Time, I'm Jasmine Brooks. We'll see you next week. The sunshine and blue skies we enjoyed today overshadowed the chill in the air, but we are in for a cold night ahead. Heading to Schuylkill County first, checking out your forecast. Partly cloudy skies low down to 29. We're up to 46 for your Friday with mostly sunny skies shining through. Tonight's creative condition comes to us from Brandy Lee Naprava, a student at the West Hazelton Elementary School. Brandy features a very windy day with a little boy even losing his hat in a strong gust. Thank you to Brandy. Let's see if windy conditions are part of the outlook in Greater Hazelton. 29 with a calm wind tonight, partly cloudy skies. It'll be mostly sunny for your Friday and we're climbing to 45 degrees. When it comes to professional baseball in northeastern Pennsylvania, it's a whole different animal. The Scranton Wilkes-Barre Yankees are no more. The AAA franchise is now the Scranton Wilkes-Barre Rail Riders. The big change was announced with a plenty of flair at an event last night. The New York Yankees still own the franchise, but decided they wanted to rebrand the team to tie in with northeastern Pennsylvania history. It's taken from the Laurel Line Railroad, which used to connect Scranton and Wilkes-Barre. The new mascot, a stylized porcupine, which was selected through a contest held to nominate a new mascot, which is named Champ. The Rail Riders will play at PNC Field, which will get a $43 million facelift for next season. News 13 will be right back. We'll head to a quick break and then more local news, sports, and a full look at your forecast through the weekend. Stay with us. It's a financial first for Luzerne County. The new county council held a public hearing to learn all about its enormous spending plan for next year. What happened at last night's hearing, just ahead on News 13. From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Hey again, everyone. Thanks for staying with us tonight. I'm Kristen Bozinski. Luzerne County is one step closer to having a new spending plan, the first actually generated under the new council manager form of government. The good news, no tax increase. As the public watched and Luzerne County Council listened at a public hearing last night, department heads from across the county presented their individual pieces of the county budget pie. Most found ways to cut within the budget. On the other hand, Luzerne County District Attorney Stephanie Salavantis requested an additional half million dollars to be added on top of her five million dollar budget for next year. She says with escalating crime in the county, her department needs it. Ma Luzerne County Manager Robert Lawton has proposed a $274 million budget which would would not raise taxes for property owners. County councils set to approve the budget on December 11th. Higher education is leading to a higher volume of traffic around a local corporate center. Now there will be better traffic safety at the entrance. A new traffic light will be installed at the entrance to the Kandu Corporate Park on Route 309. Much of the increased traffic has occurred because the Hazelton Area School District's Magnet School is located in the park. The Hazelton Area Academy of Science, which emphasizes math and the sciences, is currently housed in the high school. Next year, it will move to a location in the corporate center. 500 students and teachers will attend the academy when classes are in session and sold, it sold to the district earlier this year. Candu says while a traffic study indicated the light isn't actually required at the entrance, it plans to install one anyway and err on the side of safety. 
Officers surrounded a city apartment this morning ready to face a man with a gun, but this situation ended up a little different. Officers came to this building on North Pine Street for reports of a fight involving three people. Police never found the man who said was said to be involved. They did find two women in the second floor apartment along with small children. Now, the women told police there was never a weapon involved in the argument. The man apparently took off before police got there. Officers did find a shotgun in the attic of the building. They confiscated it after no one could prove they owned it. As of right now, police have not charged anyone in this incident. State police say they've nabbed the robber of a Freeland pharmacy and that he's facing charges in Ohio as well. Investigators say Angel Luis Molino Rivera was the robber who held up the CVS pharmacy on Center Street in Freeland back in October. Police say Molina Rivera walked into the drugstore just as it was opening and handed a supervisor a note saying, this is a robbery, just give me the money in the register. The worker did just that and he walked out of the store. State police and investigators from Freeland and Weatherly eventually tracked Molina Rivera down at his home just two blocks down the street from the CVS. Turns out he's also wanted on drug charges in Ohio. He's in the Luzerne County Prison. Well, you can bring joy to children around the world by helping a group of young people from the Freeland area. They're making Operation Christmas Child work in our area. The group is working at St. Luke's Lutheran Church to assemble special Christmas shoe boxes that will be filled with toys and other gifts and distributed to suffering children around the world. This year, Operation Christmas Child, which was founded by the Billy Graham Crusade, will deliver its 100 millionth gift box to a suffering child but they go all over the world. And there's several countries that are called giving countries, um, Canada, United States, Australia, Great Britain, Spain, and France are giving countries is what they're called. And there's countries just all over the world that'll receive them. Well, everybody likes getting presents. So why not give some presents to somebody who doesn't get them all the time? Now the group at St. Luke's in Freeland looking for toy donations to help fill the boxes as well as volunteers to help pack them. The kids will be working on the boxes every Sunday evening through this Sunday. If you'd like information about donating or helping to pack the boxes, call St. Luke's Church at 636-1241 or 751 -8549. Are you willing to pay more in taxes for more police on the streets? That's the question looming in the city of Hazleton. Mayor Joe Yunuzzi and Police Chief Frank D'Andrea are guests on tonight's Sam LaSant show to talk about what they say is a financial crisis for Hazleton. Thank you very much. Well, folks, is the city of Hazleton going bankrupt? And the police department, as the chief said, is, is this on a sinking ship. Uh, folks are going to be learning tonight on the Sam LaSan Show, uh, as well as you can read about it tomorrow uh, in the Standard Speaker. Uh, you know that 60% tax increase? Be surprised. Guess what's going to happen to it? It's on a Sam LaSan Show tonight. And also the chief explains in detail what he means when he's saying the police department's on a sinking ship. A lot of great information uh, on the shows tonight, 7 and 8 p.m., as well as, again, uh, tomorrow there'll be a, a full article about the show in the Standard Speaker. So uh, for additional times, you can check the Standard Speaker for our schedule, as well as SSPTV.com. Now back to you. All right, Sam, thanks so much. Smokers, listen up. The American Cancer Society wants you to kick the butts today and every day. More on the Great American Smokeout next. Plus a Thanksgiving dinner with all the trimmings as local seniors gathered to give thanks. News 13 was there. Some local seniors got a taste of Thanksgiving today at the Hazleton Area Senior Center. As our Jasmine Brooks tells us, this center isn't just about the scrumptious meals, it's about making friendships. For Shirley Singer, today is her Thanksgiving. Her parents have passed on and her son lives across the country. So the senior center is where Shirley is celebrating her holiday. So a lot of people don't have anybody around. Their husbands are gone, their wives are gone. And uh, I think it's great that they have something like this. And Shirley's not the only one taking advantage of the wonderful meal served today. Dozens of seniors came out to enjoy the feast and the company of others. Well, I think it's wonderful to get a chance to meet new meet people of all ages, seniors. We, we socialize a lot, we do rumbo, we, we talk, we have a good time. Oh yeah, a lot of different people that come in. Every week it's somebody different, you know, come in and try it. 
it, today is really crowded. Believe it or not, this Thanksgiving dinner right here at the Hazleton Senior Center has 69 guests, making it the largest crowd out of all the senior centers in Luzerne County. It makes me happy because then I know seniors from the community are partaking in the lunch program um, and they're obtaining at least one well-balanced, warm, healthy meal a day. But that's not all. These seniors are meeting new people, keeping active, and most importantly, staying happy. Reporting for News 13, Jasmine Brooks, Hazleton. Can't complain too much about the forecast for the past few days. Although a little chilly, the sun has been out in full force. Let's check out the conditions for the next four days ahead, including the weekend. First in Schuylkill County tonight, partly cloudy skies with a low down to 29 degrees. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sun across the board. We see 46 for your Friday, 48 Saturday and Sunday up to 49. And then Monday, some clouds do move into the area. Not bringing any rain at this point though. 46 will be our high. And tonight's creative condition comes to us from Brandy Lee Naprava, a student at the West Hazleton Elementary School. Brandy features a very windy day with a little boy even losing his hat in a strong gust. Thank you to Brandy. Let's see if windy conditions are part of the outlook here in Greater Hazleton. We'll see just a light wind tonight, low down to 29 degrees under partly cloudy skies. And the next four days ahead are sun, well, three of them are sun filled, I should say, with temps in the 40s. We dip to the 30s in the evening. And then for Monday, some clouds move in and we see a high up to 43 degrees. Freddie B's up next with the latest results from districts as the championship showdowns draw near. Sports is coming your way. And later, News 13 was there as high school students were shown the harsh reality of what smoking does to your body. The Great American Smokeout is today. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. Well, as we told you earlier in the week, a lot of volleyball, field hockey, soccer, state playoffs going on, and we said, Let's not forget, we've got PIAA football. and That's coming up this weekend, and I know we're still a day from the weekend, but uh, let's whet the appetite a little bit because there are some dandy games on the schedule, and uh, we want to zoom in on some of these. Leading it off is uh, the team that's closest to Hazleton now, since nobody right here in the Hazleton area is involved. It's the Berwick Bulldogs, and the Dogs will be taking on the Comets of Abington Heights, and I'm telling you, this could be the old-fashioned Donnybrook right here. It'll be at Crispin Field on Saturday at 1 o'clock, and it certainly would be worth going over the mountain and maybe checking this one out. It's going to be high school football as it was meant to be played. This will be a throwback to the old days at Crispin Field, no question about it. But this will be for the District 2 Championship, so a lot on the line. We'll see what happens right there. Meanwhile, in the Quad A level, you got a rematch between Delaware Valley and Scranton. That'll be under the light, Scranton Memorial Stadium. Kickoff will be around 7 o'clock. Remember, the Knights handled the uh, Warriors of DelVal very easily when they met in the regular season. We'll see if that proves true in the encore. Down south, you got Parkland hosting Pleasant Valley. Now, this is still a semifinal because remember, in Quad A, it's a sub-regional. So uh, we'll see what happens there. In reality, the winner of Del Val Scranton will be crowned the District 2 champ, and the winner of Pleasant Valley Parkland will be crowned the District 11 champ, but they still have to play off next week in that sub-regional. That'll actually be week one of the state playoff game. In AA, Lakeland and uh, Wyoming Valley, uh, Wyoming area will square off the uh, Warriors and Chiefs. That one will be Friday under the lights. Dunmore and Old Forge in single A. Why does it always seem to come down to Dunmore and Old Forge? That's uh, a throwback to the way when we had smaller schools and community schools. And it's a heck of a lot of fun. That's going to be an interesting football game. And incidentally, there is a possibility with the Berwick-Abington Heights game and that uh, scranton delval parkland Pleasant Valley game, that if things work out right, Harmon Geist could be hosting playoff games round one of the states next weekend. Stay tuned, we'll let you know. In the NBA, the Sixers lose. And I know when you look at a game in the middle of the month of November, you say uh, uh, ho-hum, so it's the NBA, doesn't really matter. What's alarming about this one for the Sixers is the Pistons had not won all year. 
They're now 1-8 and eight on the season, so the Sixers get beat up pretty handily by a team that hadn't won a game. That's never a good sign. Tonight, Boston is at Brooklyn. I, I just love always saying that at Brooklyn. I feel like we're back in the 1950s waiting for Jackie Robinson, Carl Ferrillo, and Pee Wee Reese to show up. But uh, it's basketball in the big city. Meanwhile, speaking of New York, the other team, the Knicks, they're in Texas to take on San Antonio. In the American Hockey League, the Pens, well, they're winning a lot of close ones lately. They skate to a 2-1 win over Springfield. They'll be hosting Bridgeport coming up on Friday. And we're brought to you by Bottled X, where tonight it's Rack 'em Up Rib Night. They're racking up their flavor with fire grilled ribs. You get a half rack of meaty, fall off the bone, St. Louis style spare ribs, and it is smothered in that sweet barbecue sauce. They fire grill it and serve it with bottomless fries for just $9.95. And oh, don't forget, huge imported beer selection, pool, dart, shuffleboard. Good time waiting for you up at Bottled X. How would your lungs look if you'd smoke cigarettes for 20 years? Students in our area got an up-close look today. As Christina Papa tells us, it was all part of the Great American Smokeout. Oh, Goopy, tacky tar, and a black like lung might make you think twice about smoking. After one year of smoking cigarettes, this is what your lungs look like. It's nasty. It's crazy. It's disgusting. That's exactly why Sorrento Gardens Drug and Alcohol Services of Hazleton decided to bring their booth full of goodies to the school today to spread awareness of the effects of smoking to the students in honor of the Great American Smokeout. Today is a Great American Smokeout Day and it's a national campaign across the whole United States and we're trying to get people to quit smoking who are smoking and trying to get people not to smoke who are maybe being peer pressured in school. Students got to take a look at the booth during their lunch period. Some students say they lost their appetite after seeing the effects of the smoke on this 20-year-old pair of lungs. Panzarella tells me that visuals like this black pig lung really helps the kids learn more about the dangerous uses of nicotine. Because we can't see people's lungs and we don't know how they're turning black and what's happening uh, with the tar that's getting past the filter. So the visual uh, displays are very convincing. Sorrento Garden says it tries to provide education and awareness on health issues like smoking to the new generation, so hopefully they'll think before they light up. Stay healthy. Smoking's bad for you. Stay healthy. Christina Papa, News 13, Hazleton. When it comes to professional baseball in northeastern Pennsylvania, it's a whole different animal. The Scranton Wilkesbury Yankees are no more. The AAA franchise is now the Scranton Wilkesbury Rail Riders. The big change was announced with plenty of flair at an event last night. The New York Yankees still own the franchise, but decided they wanted to rebrand the team to tie in with northeastern Pennsylvania history. Now it's taken from the Laurel Line Railroad, which used to connect Scranton and Wilkesbury. The new mascot a stylized porcupine, which was selected through a contest held to nominate a new mascot, which is named Champ. Now, the rail riders will play at PNC Field, which will get a $43 million facelift for next season. That'll do it for us tonight. Thank you for making us a part of your day. You can catch this newscast again with a rebroadcast throughout tonight or simply go to News 13's website at ssptv.com. You'll find everything Greater Hazleton, Schuylkill County, and beyond. It's all just a click away. On behalf of all of us here at News 13, be safe. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Good night.